Peace, peace. This your host, Selah Shalom, and this is the Cosmon Teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is called the story of Yahshua. The same way true God, son of Jehovah, raised up Sakaya of India and Confucius of China, likewise did God raise up Yahshua of Northeast Africa. Many people, especially Christians, believe that this is the true image of the Messiah with his disciples at the Last Supper. This image was created 1,400 years after the Messiah. This image was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. And this is the image most Catholics and Christians believe to be the Messiah and his disciples, Europeans. But this is the image of the beast, the Antichrist, because 1,200 years before this image in the 2nd century AD, you had this image of the Messiah and his disciples, which existed from the 2nd century until the 14th century when they began to whitewash all the black icons from Rome and Europe during the Renaissance. Some of them survive today to give us proof of these things. So here you have the original and the fake side by side. Yahshua was a Nazarene, and in order to be a Nazarene, you had to take the vow. You had to let your hair grow in locks. And here you can clearly see the locks as a vow to him being a Nazarene. But on the fake image, the Antichrist image, you see his hair straight, no sign of a Nazarene vow. Yahshua was an Isaian Nazarean Jew. The Isaians were a sect of Jews that separated from the apostate Jews that followed Baal and other surrounding gods. And the Isaians was under the auspice of Moses when he returned to redeem Pharaoh from the lower heavens around 400 BC, 400 years before the birth of the Messiah. As I explained in the vid called Moses in Heaven Return to Earth, Yahshua was sent to restore the Mosaic law, the peace policy among the Israelites, one of the reasons Moses appeared to Yahshua, being that the Israelites were following the heathen ways, worshipping Baal, El, Elohim, Ashtaroth, all the tribal gods of Canaan, and setting up kings to rule over the people after the manner of the pagans. Yahshua was sent to show them how to live according to the ancient custom of Israel, and not these pagan customs. In the original Mosaic law, family supposed to live in communities, serving no kings, no leaders, but the Creator only. So when Israel began choosing kings, they were under the inspiration of a false god, more likely Baal. Owaspi even exposes the truth about how this Jesus came about, and it has nothing to do with the Hebrew Yahshua, but I will explain this in vids to come. Now, God's book of Esker chapter 42, verse 1 through 17, the states, verse 1, God, Jehovah's Son, was wise above all these trials, for he had the light of Jehovah's kingdom with him, verse 2. And it will be shown presently how much further ahead are the plans laid out by Jehovah's Son than by his enemies. Verse 3. Because Pharaoh persecuted the Israelites, Moses put a curse upon Pharaoh. Now after hundreds of years in the lower heavens, behold, Pharaoh was cast in hell and then in chaos. And none but Moses could deliver him as hath been previously described. And I explained this in the video called Moses in Heaven Return to Earth. Verse 4. So Moses descended from the higher heavens and delivered Pharaoh, and he provided Pharaoh a new name, Elias, and sent him back to earth to labor with the Israelites in order to fulfill his shortness and righteous works. Elias therefore became a willing volunteer and many angels with him. Now here is the origin of the Esaians, being an Israelite sect that was under the inspiration of Jehovah and not the false god Baal or El. Verse 5. And these angels inspired 700 Israelites to separate themselves from all other people and to go and live by direction of the angels of Jehovah. Moreover, the angels inspired these people to call themselves Isaians, as commanded by Moses in heaven. So here the Isaians started out as a group of 700 Israelites, separating from the Israelites that practiced the ways of the heathen. This time would have been when the Israelites returned from Babylon around 400 B.C. under Ezra. Verse 6, These Esaians were therefore a separate people pledged to Jehovah to have no king nor earth ruler except their rabbis, and they dwelt in communities and families of tens and twenties and hundreds, holding all things in common. But in marriage they were monogamic. Neither would they have more than one suit of clothes each, and they lived on fruits and herbs only nor ate they fish nor flesh of anything that had ever breathed the breath of life. And they bathed every morning at sunrise, 
and worshipped before the altar of Jehovah, doing in all things after the manner of the ancient faithists, by virtue of the angel hosts who were with them, did they these things, and they held communion with the angels of heaven every night before going to sleep. So this is the religious practice Yahshua came out of. As it stated, they served no kings but Jehovah only, and they ate no fish, no flesh. So they were vegans, they were vegetarians, likewise with Yahshua. For 400 years before Yahshua's birth, these Esaians ate no dead animals or fish. So Mary and Joseph, the parents of Yahshua, were vegetarian as well. Verse 7, Elias had said, Because I persecuted the faithists, the Israelites, and raised up my hands against them and against Jehovah, I was an instrument in part of their fall. Now will I labor with them to reestablish them in purity and love. And he so labored. This is an example of what you reap is what you sow. Verse 8, And Elias and his angel hosts made the camps of the Esaians their dwelling places, watching over these few Israelites day and night for hundreds of years, yeah, without leaving them. These faithful angels guarded them from all the warring hosts of angels, belonging to the armies of Baal and Ashtaroth, and to the Truan gods, Luamunk and his host. So here you see how they were guarded from the surrounding false gods. Verse 9, And though the Esaians lived in great purity of body and soul, yet they were evilly slandered by the world's people around about them on every side. Verse 10, But Jehovah prospered the seed of the Esaians in holiness and love for many generations. Verse 11, Then came Gaphania, chief of the Luiz, and Luiz are angels that are responsible for raising up prophets, according to the commandment of God to raise up and hear to hear the voice of Jehovah. And four generations more, and hear was born, named Yahshua. And he was the child of Joseph and his wife Mary, devoted worshippers of Jehovah, who stood aloft from all other people except the Esaians. So here it states Joseph and Mary was the parent of Yahshua. It states nothing about an immaculate birth. And I will show in coming vids how other stories got twisted in the story of Yahshua during the time of Constantine and the Nancy Creed. Verse 12, And because of the extreme youth of Mary, the child was of doubtful sex, whereupon the rabbi said the child was an Aisu, signifying neutral. Just as the mother of Sakaya and Confucius were very young, likewise with Yahshua's mother, Mary. Just as Confucius was an Aisu born, Likewise with Yahshua being an Aisu born. An Aisu signifies neutral, having no earthly desires, and in some cases signifying neither gender. It is this term Aisu that Constantine used to formulate Aisos, which is Jesus. But I will explain this in vids to come. Now in Matthew chapter 2 verse 2 where it talks about a star being seen by the wise men and all the people, here's what that star really was. Verse 13. The time of the birth of the child was three days after the descent of a heavenly ship from the throne of God. And many of the Esaians looked up and beheld the star. And they felt the cold wind of the higher heavens fall upon the place and round about the tent where the child was born. And they said one to another, Jehovah remember us, or Emmanuel. So here it shows you that the star was a heavenly ship, a chariot from the throne of God to bear witness to the birth of Yahshua. Verse 14, Gaphania, the chief angel of the Lewis, knew beforehand what the birth would be, and he sent out around about the Esaian encampments extra guardian angels, and these notified the descending hosts of angels of what was near at hand. Verse 15, so the messengers from heaven tarried until the child was born, equating Elias of the time ahead when Moses and Elias with their hosts would come to complete the deliverance of the spirits of the Egyptians whom Moses had colonized in Atmospheria. Verse 16, Ilya said, Thank Jehovah, I shall once more look upon Moses' face. Verse 17, And when the birth was complete, the angels of heaven re-entered the starship and hastened back to paradise, God's heavenly seat. So the star of Bethlehem, the star over Jerusalem that the wise men of the east seen was a chariot from the heavenly throne of God. Now, 
God's book of Esker, chapter 43, verse 1 through 15, the states. Now here's where Moses appeared to Yahshua, verse 1. When Yahshua was grown up and ready for his labor, God provided a host of 100 million angels to make a line of light from his holy council down to the earth, and they so made it. Verse 2. 